Oh, I got to call Dex. All right, let me get Dex connected in here. Uh, uh, hi, Pat. What are we working on today? And, uh, uh, <clears throat> why are we meeting virtually? Hey, hey Dex. Figured seeing how you were out of town this week, I didn't want to leave you hanging on the learning. So today we're going to decide which asphalt binder we should use to pave the road out in front of our building. Are you ready? Uh, I wanted to drive the paver. I guess I can't do that virtually. Nope, nope. We aren't really paving, are we? Only in our minds today. But this is an important part of the process for the design. All right. Back to the binder then. The binders I've seen look the same to me. How do we know which one to use? Well, all asphalt binders are black and sticky. But depending on how they're made and their temperatures, and the loading rate applied to them, they may perform very differently under similar conditions. So uh, let me share my screen here. So take these two binders on the screen, for instance, they've been heated to the same temperature. See at the same temperature, this asphalt binder is still thick. Well, this one is starting to get a little runny. So what do you think would happen if we then put these in the freezer? It would freeze, of course. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so at cold temperatures, asphalt binders become stiff and brittle. However, just like at high temperatures, different binders will react differently to cold temperatures. So what happens if you think we get them hot again? They melt? Yep, they become soft and they melt. So for asphalt pavements, when binders become soft at high temperatures, the pavement is prone to permanent deformation caused by the traffic loading. And at cooler temperatures, the asphalt binders become stiff and brittle, and they could do, they could crack due to thermal stresses within the binder or, or the, the fatigue caused by the traffic. So in order to determine if the asphalt binder will perform well in a pavement, we have to run a series of tests to determine how it responds to the loading over a whole range of temperatures. So a very stiff asphalt binder will be, give us good running resistance at high temperatures, while a softer, more flexible asphalt binder would give us good cracking resistance at cold temperatures. That sounds complicated. How do we do that? Well, the performance grading or PG system is described in ASHTO M320 and also an ASDM D6373. And it provides us the temperatures, the tests, and the criteria needed to evaluate these binders and assign them a grade. So I guess the binders that you showed me are two different grades. Yes, one of them is a PG76-22, and the other is a PG52-34. Why not just say 54 and 18? What? Well, 76 minus 22 is 54, and 52 minus 34 is 18. I'm guessing that since 54 is the bigger number, the PG 76 minus 22 is a better product, and we should use that one. No, 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 no. This binder is a PG 76 minus 22. That first number is 76 degrees Celsius. And this tells us as long as the pavement temperature stays below 76 degrees Celsius, that this binder should be stiff enough that it shouldn't rut. And if I need a stiffer or a softer binder for my climate, then I can increase or decrease that PG grade by degrees, by increments of six degrees. Six degree increments, okay. So now the second number is minus 22 degrees Celsius. And this temperature tells us that the pavement shouldn't crack as long as it doesn't get colder than minus 22 degrees Celsius. So we can also increase or decrease the low PG grade by increments of six degrees to find a binder that meets our low temperature requirements. So what about that PG 52 minus 34? Well, 52 degrees is lower than 76. This binder will be too soft to resist rutting at 76. It would need to be used somewhere that the pavement won't get hotter than 52 degrees. Yeah, yeah. What about the minus 34? It can handle colder temperatures without cracking since negative 34 is colder than negative 22. So a colder climate. Good, good. So now that you understand the differences between the grades, we need to decide which one to use for our road out here. Uh, I guess we need to start taking the pavement's temperature. That might take a while. No. Well, luckily, we don't have to do that. Oh. So the FHWA provides us with a weather database called LTPP Bind. 
And all we need to do is enter in the location of our pavement and it will provide us the PG grade needed. How are they measured? Well, the high temperature is a maximum seven day average temperature, 20 millimeters below the surface of the pavement. And the low temperature is a single occurrence cold temperature measured at the surface. It looks like for a low traffic pavement in our climate, we would need a PG 64 minus 22 binder. Correct, correct. And where do you think we would use that PG 52 minus 34? Ah, the North Pole. <laughs> yeah, somewhere much colder climate than here. So uh, what are your takeaways from today's lesson, Dex? Well, the PG asphalt binder grading system helped us determine what asphalt binder will perform well for our pavement. It's based on climate and allows us to assign grades to asphalt binders so we can know which one to use for a given project based on the range of temperatures it will experience. Sounds to me like you've got it. Bring on the paver. Oh, all right, Dex. Sounds good. We'll see you later.